Hello, it's me again. Welcome back. Yeah, so I thought I'd just uh, do another stream, uh, the waffle stream. Hang on. <clears throat> Cover a few random bits and pieces. Uh, feeling a bit down today. It's one of those uh, days again. Uh, hang on a sec. I'm just getting the chat up. That is unless everyone's doing the gardens today, which wouldn't surprise me because it's quite sunny. I don't know where, what it's like where you are, but it's uh, sunny again here. Yeah, we've got one person watching. Just bear with me a sec. Have we got eight watching now? Eleven watching. There we go. So you're not all doing your grass. <laughs> uh, Stu Rowe, hi, hi Stu. Uh, how are you? CRG, afternoon. Uh, Raphael, I can't say that surname. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm awful at uh, pronunciation of some uh, certain names. Um, so is it Czech or Polish? Russian, maybe? Um, Spitfire RF100, hello. Hi, John Flower, hi, Andy Myers. Good afternoon, guys. Right, let me just uh, pop out the uh, chat. Uh, I'm going to catch up with some of the real time clock um, stuff. I'll show you the progress I made. I've saved you. I saved you from uh, probably the worst stream ever. You would have been uh, watching what I did yesterday. And I'll tell you what, I spent the whole day working on real-time clock modules. So I've got one here. Let's oh, wheel you over here. So uh, in previous streams, yeah, we were looking at these memory expansions. And uh, the we got the memory working on all of them, but the real-time clocks weren't working. These two, in particular, were really troublesome and uh, I, do you know I started yesterday about 10 or 11 o'clock and I finished at about 4 4 4 30 in the afternoon so I must have spent about five or six hours on these yesterday that is how pointless I uh, I am I spend ridiculous amounts of time on things that other people would literally probably just put into the bin um, so what was the issue with these the it, it just kept coming up saying no real-time clock detected on both of these boards now if you cast your mind back there was a point where i said these were wired really unusually you've got the uh, crystal here and on each side of the crystal is a capacitor now this one did have a trim cap uh was it that one that one had a trim cap i've removed that anyway i'll come to that in a sec but you have a capacitor on each side of the crystal to ground on these boards that isn't what was happening you had 12 volts coming across that top rail there um through a diode and then the 12 volts was being dropped by that diode down to just roughly 10 volts, I think. I think there's actually two diodes. It was almost 10 volts. And then the 10 volts was going into the VCC pin here. So this chip, instead of getting 5 volts, was getting 10 volts. And it was also going to the battery. And I think what was happening is maybe there was a voltage drop. When you had a proper 3.2 or 3.6 volt cell or whatever they are, that it might be higher than that, it might be 4 point something volts. But when you got one of those original VARTA battery cells on here, and I'm guessing you had a voltage drop. So instead of you know roughly 10 volts on here, it might be 7 or 6 or some, something like that. And I think ultimately that was what the issue was i uh, what i did is i traced all of the connections on the real-time clock here I, I not only logic probed them first of all and found that they were all okay you know we had activity on every pin but i traced every single pin to here and measured them on the board down here to make sure it wasn't something to do with a bad connection here because uh, on one of these it, you know there was some corrosion and stuff on the edge there and it didn't look great but i'd cleaned it up and i thought well, if that's it but uh, yeah it wasn't so i'd followed all the connectivity i'd swapped the chips around I also proved on this board here, the one you saw me get working the other the other day, um, that the chips work in this board. So it wasn't the chips. And um, I tested, you know, got the scope onto the crystal again here. No problems at all, it's oscillating. So at that point, I changed the design of this. So instead of that ten, roughly 10 volts coming to the other side of the caps here, which I thought was weird, I detached the trace, you can just see I cut it there. And uh, I joined it to ground, as it sh as a, in my mind, as I think it should be. That still didn't fix it. So I was left with the scenario of like, oh my God, what is wrong with these? The chips are all right, the board is all right, the wiring's all right, the crystal's all right. The way the crystals have got a ground on the other side of the caps, that's correct. What What is it? What What's the answer? And then something was niggling in the back of my mind, and I was looking at the way it was wired. And I thought, I wonder if, if I was to remove the diode there that feeds this, you know, 10 volts into the chip and 10 volts into the battery side, 
Bear in mind, it's not going into this battery because we've got a little uh, diode there protecting it. But I thought, if I remove that diode, remove the 12 volt line out of the equation, what do we get? So I tried that. I removed the diode and I measured the pin here and it was 5 volts. Um, and suddenly the real time clock chip was detected. So that was the answer. I just removed the diode there that was feeding, like I say, 10 volts roughly from the 12 volts to this, this, you know, this part of the, the, the board. So then I thought, well, okay, let's do the same thing on this one. So I did exactly the same thing. I first changed the board configuration so that the caps were to ground rather than the the, the 10 volts that comes in from the diode because there was a diode here on this one. Let me just see if I can show you. Let me move you over. Yeah, there was a diode there. So all I did is I lifted one side of that diode. Plugged it back in, suddenly real time clock detected, work at 100%, no issues at all. So, yeah, that has really uh, been a difficult one and it stumped me because I don't, still don't now understand why, unless, like I say, there's some voltage drop, why you would feed 10 volts into the VCC pin on this instead of, you know, five. Um, it's bizarre. But I think the reason it wasn't detecting it when it had that higher voltage is because your voltage levels, you know, you've got inputs and outputs on this chip, yeah? And they kind of they they are related to your your VCC level. So if you've got 10 volts coming in here, uh, sorry, I just bend that crystal over. If you've got 10 volts coming into this chip, instead of it outputting say I don't know roughly three point something volts or four point vol something volts as a high, you know between three and five volts, let's say as a high, your high level is going to be higher. It could be like six volts or seven volts or eight volts, and in conjunction with that, your low level, your logic low level, instead of you know being down where it should be, like less than a volt or something, it could logic low might actually be two volts or I don't know. It's, I think that's what it is, because that's all we've done. All we've done is lower the, the VCC level coming in into this down to five volts from 10 and suddenly it's okay suddenly it detects this chip um, and it's not like the chip was locking up or anything like that or you know because like i said there was activity there was activity all the way around there so super interesting um that that was the solution so uh, i'll just quickly just test these now and then we'll move on to some of the things um i've got the archimedes here that I'm, i want to just test them quickly on this stream we'll step through the we've got a 3000 uh, and a couple of 3010s we'll just test those maybe launch a few others on them have a look at them make sure those are working because i need to get those ready to go um those will be uh, sold soon i'll stick them on ebay soon i think and uh, i've got a sim over there for an amiga uh, you know a 72 pin sim that needs a couple of chips added on so we could try and fit those uh, and a few of the bits and pieces i've got something arrived from anthony Anthony uh, over at Riot Retro Gaming, so I can show you that. It's not gaming related, but it's electronics related. Uh, anyway, I'll just power this on. Let's, uh, let's just quickly spend a minute with each one of these just to make sure they're all working. So uh, I'll just lift you up here, point you at the screen while that uh, boots up. Did I go off uh, stream there? Did that go off? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it didn't, because it just said reconnecting. So I hope it didn't uh, drop out for a minute there. But if we go into the uh, real-time clock, yeah, there we go. So it's got the right day and the right time, actually. Tuesday, May the 5th. I set this yesterday, uh, but roughly yesterday tea time. So you can't quite see that, can you? Um, yeah, I set that roughly yesterday tea time. Yeah, someone said just for a second, just buffered. Yeah, sorry about that. Let me just bring the Mac over so I can catch up with the chat. I'll try and be a little bit, bit better catching up with the chat as we go along here. Because I know the last few streams I've uh, been so focused on what I've been doing, I haven't uh, been able to keep up with the chat at all. Someone said, what's the deal on the kickstart switch on that board? Yeah, that's... Uh, I don't know that you saw that. That was one I fixed in a previous stream, actually. It just needed, um, like, a double edged I can show you that and take it out in a minute. A double-sided uh, pin, stripper pin header to connect it up, and it needed a wire to the reset uh, line. Um, and you just reset it with the uh, control uh, Amiga. Amiga. Uh, Steve, uh, Lou's here. See, uh, hi, Stephen. I uh, just caught up with your stream this morning, actually, Stephen. I didn't see you done one last night. Um, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here, so you can see that is working. So let's switch that off. So that's that's definitely 100% fixed that card now. The RAM's all right on it, and the uh, real-time clock. So let's test the next one. So this was one that uh, I modded yesterday as well. You can see this is a one meg board. I'll have a video, I'll show you, there's a video going to go up for this. It's only going to be a short one where I added four chips on this to make it one meg. Um, so you can only utilize it in one meg mode on 
uh, an A500 Plus, I think, you'd probably be able, to, be able to get it working on a straight 500, but you'd probably need to do some sort of modification. When I say modification, you might just have to pull a wire from Gary or something. You could, in theory, I think, have uh, one meg of slow run on a straight 500. Because I do remember I had, uh, at some point in the past, I had a... Uh, I forgot who made it now. It was an MFM controller, but it also had one and a half megabytes of RAM on it. And I, I got that working in a 500 and a 500 plus at some point. Um, so I know it can be done. I think there's a theoretical limit of something like one and a half meg of slow that you can actually answer these systems, but it's just, you, you need that address to go, to go with it. So I'm just putting the battery in it. And I'm set. Right, I've got a battery in. And plug it in. Switch it on. I'll just show you this so you can see it is in there. So that's that one there, plugged in. Let's just give that a test. So let's get into battery and clock. Yeah, so it's invalid because obviously it's not had a battery. Let's uh, reset it. Uh, I don't think he's bothered setting these all individually. We'll, we'll set the time. We'll set the year like that. The time and day. Um, sorry, the, the date. We'll set the time. I'm just going to see if this rolls over on the 24-hour thing properly. So we'll set it to 1359 because I know two, at least two of these now need. A new chip because it's not rolling over properly when it's in 24 hour mode so they're not 100 percent yet but they will be when the new chips arrive oh so many clicks need a new mouse button after this thing save and exit just see if that rolls over to 1400 yeah you see that one's gone to zero zero can you see that that was something i noticed yesterday about this one so i've got two of these now that do need a new chip so they're working all right uh, but they do need a new chip because as soon as you get to uh, let's say you roll over on the any hour past 12 o'clock in 24 hour mode it just resets to zero zero which is uh, really weird so yeah that was that one so that needs a chip this one originally had that same fault but we pulled the chip off that one which means one of these remaining two, so we'll do that one next, one of these remaining two is going to have uh, the same issue. In fact, this is the one we started with, isn't it? But we'll do it anyway, because I want to just see how... It... In fact, this one, this one's all right, isn't it? Let's just check it, because it had the right time of day, which shows that the 24-hour mode on this one is okay, which uh, I guess logic says then that means the final board, which we'll do in a minute, is going to have that 24-hour um, problem again. So let's, let's do that again. Battery, clock. Yeah, so the very fact that this one's showing, uh, can't remember on camera, the very fact this is showing 1349 and is okay shows that the chip on that one is okay with the 24 hour thing. Um, so let's just disconnect that one and we'll test the last one. And then we'll have a look at the uh, Archimedes, I think. And we'll come back to some of the Amiga stuff uh, shortly. So, uh, right, that's that one in. We've not got a battery in this one yet, but I don't think I need it actually for what we're doing. So let's just go back down there again. Battery back clock. Reset. So that's set it. 8th of May, 5th, 2020. And again, we'll just set the uh, hour to 13, 14, 59. Yeah, 13, 59. Yeah, my words aren't coming out right today. You probably gathered that. I'm just in one of those, having one of those days where, oh, I'm right around. Yeah, it's having one of those days. Yeah, so sorry I missed your stream last night, Stephen. I caught up this morning, it was good. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seconds. I'm trying to read the chat here while I'm doing this. I'm going to shoot past. Right, so let's save it there, save and exit. So, three, two, one. Yeah, there you go. That was on to zero zero again. Look, so that's two. That's the two that I need new chips for. So uh, that's all right. I've ordered four chips, so we're going to have enough to do those. Uh, the main thing is I can send that other one back to Tom now. So following this stream, um, I will package that up with Tom's other things, his CD32 and the A500 with the serial port issue you saw me fix in previous uh, streams. There, send that all back to Tom. I'll try and arrange for that to be collected tomorrow. I think if, I, if I've got time today. It, uh, it might, might lead to Thursday, collection for Thursday, I don't know. I'll speak to Tom and see if he's got a preference on what day 
wants it to be delivered. Morgan just gains. Hi, Jamie. I've been watching the video of Jamie's as well, actually, just, just prior to this uh, stream. Um, he was putting up some shelves. Who, who knew? Who knew? It would be interesting to watch someone putting up shelves, but it was. <laughs> if anything, because it just reminded me of how bad I am at DIY. And uh, I really felt for Jamie while he was doing it. It's really difficult stuff. <clears throat> Stephen said... Uh, no worries, I was just playing around with the specky. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, that especially that graphical issue you've got with yours, with the when it goes into inverse mode and get a bit of shimmering. I'm not sure if that's just the standard chroma issue or what. I don't know. You, you might be an idea to try and get an RGB cable or something wired up to see what difference you get with that. Uh, smooth MJ Malcolm, hi. Nice to see you, Malcolm. Uh, and the Highlander, hi. Uh, got lots of people viewing. It's put me under a lot of pressure trying to find something interesting to show you. Right, let's have a look at the uh, Archimedes, because I need to test them just briefly. So let's uh, just ground myself a sec. Uh, and just connect everything here. Trying to make some space for the Archimedes down here. Been watching uh, a few things on the TV, like box sets and things. I watched Afterlife. Anyone seen that with Ricky Gervais? I really enjoyed it. Um, my friend Colin had been uh, mentioning for a while you should watch it if you like Ricky Gervais, you know, you'll enjoy it. Well, I watched the first one. It was like super depressing. <laughs> and I just couldn't get into it. I thought, wow, I don't like this at all. But uh, I gave it another try and I started on episode two. And uh, kid you not, I watched it back to back, like every episode of both seasons and really enjoyed it. It was really good. It brings a few tears to the eyes at various points, but uh, really good. Um, I also watched a foreign thing on Netflix that had English voiceovers. Um, it's called Into the Night, I think, which is about a post apocalypse, uh, apocalyptic type thing. You know, it's like I think the sun just goes crazy and starts emitting gamma rays or something. And the idea being, you, they get on this plane and they've got to keep flying west to try and avoid the uh, sun coming up. I did wonder if that was actually technically possible. Can you actually fly faster than the planet rotates and just keep flying west and always avoid the sun. I'm not sure if that's even possible. You fly at, what, 500 mile an hour, maybe 800 mile an hour? I don't know. I'll leave it to you to discuss in the comments. Is it possible to fly faster, you know, just stay constantly in the night? I don't know. So I'll just uh, bring one of those Archimedes over. And... Yeah, so I'm always a bit nervous about testing things that uh, I've previously covered and, and know that are fixed, you know, they were 100% when I left them. Uh, that A2000 board the other day was a good example of that. Uh, I could have sworn that that board was uh, good to fight another day, and then we came to get it out, and lo and behold, it had a fault. <laughs> um, and I had kind of experienced that with one of these Archimedes. It was the one that was red screening. Um, I powered it back up about uh, a month or two ago. It was, it was uh, after my video went up, but... Um, and we got a red screen again, and all I did is take, took it back to bits, and the bit where the memory the module, I can't really show you because you're a bit close there, the bit where the, uh, what's it called, the optional, hang on a second, I'm just trying to work out to tilt this camera, yeah, the bit where the, um, it's under here, in this area of the keyboard here, just underneath there, the bit where the little memory module goes in, there's a 4 meg module in there now, and all I did is just push that a little bit, and it clicked back, it clicked down a little bit as if it had come out with a bit of uh, chip creep, and powered it back on, it was fine. So I think that's all it was. But uh, yeah, it's things like that kind of uh, worry me a little bit. And those are the sort of things I need to try and avoid. I just realised I'm standing on those connectors there. I shouldn't do that. It's just the, the way that I'm having to try and do this stream. Right, let me... Uh, it's plugged in. What do we need? Just need a mouse, got the mouse and composite. So I'll zoom you out. Yeah, we just need to connect composite up there. Plug you. Uh, put you over here, not plug you. Hang on a minute. All right, that's that. Uh, connect the mouse up. If I can find the mouse port. Yeah, that's the mouse port, and then your composite cable, which you've got here. So these were all composite mod, these uh, 3010s. So I'll switch it on, I think. Fingers crossed. I need to switch the TV over, I've just realised. It's on an RGB channel at the moment. And there's a question about the batteries. Are the batteries alright? Well, I think they are actually. That battery's not failed, has it? It's um, kept the settings there. If the battery had failed, 
Um, it would have, uh, you know, wouldn't have been through the UI there, it would have come up with a supervisor prompt for all of them. Just catch up with chat sec. Uh, all those interesting sound of pressure. Uh, man, oh, it's got 10 USB speakers. Only in Concord. There we go. Terrible fire, only in Concord. Yeah, so I think if you're flying in Concord, you probably could fly west and avoid the daylight. So, uh, yeah, that's a program there about just flying standard 747 or something west and avoiding uh, the sun coming up. I'm not sure how they did that. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was technically possible. Earth uh, spins about a thousand miles an hour. There we go. Yeah, so <laughs> it's funny the things I think when I'm watching things. Uh, it was good though. I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. Uh, on this mouse, I struggled a bit on this book. So let's go into the disc here. I might not be able to test much on these, it's just like my wife's working in the room and the speakers on these Archimedes are a pain, aren't they? She, well, you can turn them off, but they don't, it doesn't always work. When you turn it off in the uh, configure thing down there, and then where is it now? Oh, this mouse. There you go, configure. Let me just see if I can turn the sound off down there. Yeah, so loudspeaker's not enabled. In theory, I can wire the sound up to the TV, actually. But anyway, let's just see, see if something will load off here. So I'm going to... Uh, where has it gone? J -j Asp, Jasp, uh, ADFFS. So that's the equivalent of like WHD load on the uh, Amiga. Oh. See a bit better there now. Uh, into the discs folder. Now I'm not sure if this was, yeah, it wasn't dismounted. I got a warning there saying discs was not dismounted properly. It doesn't matter, you just ignore it and then it mounts it anywhere. It always does that if you don't dismount that folder before you stop the, you know, shut down the system. Stephen says, need to drop for meetings. No worries, thanks Stephen. Good to see you anyway. Uh, how far can I expect plus five to drop over to edge connectors? <coughs> I'm not sure what you mean by edge connectors. So if you drop over a cable, you know, you've got like a one meter cable, you might see a, a measurable, or you will see a measurable drop there. It could be, I don't know, 0.2 volts or something like that, I don't know. Um, but on a connector, joining another connector, it's going to be negligible unless you've got some tarnish on the connectors themselves, you know, some oxidization or something like that. So what should we try here? Let's uh, find something. Uh, Where's magic pockets? I'm not sure that was. Oh, it is on here. Give that a go. Yeah, Xavier set these um, IDE drives up. You know, the, it's actually a compact flash card, I think. Is it? I think it is. Something like that. Oh, it's a solid state disk, isn't it? Uh, what's his name? It's like a little USB type device. Oh, no, it might have compact flash on it. I don't know what I'll look inside in a minute. Yeah, so you can hear the sounds coming from the. Archimedes here, even though I've just disabled the speaker. So, yeah, I can't do much more than that. I'm going to stop it now because my wife is working and concentrating. She might even be in a meeting. Anyway, it is working, so we'll just uh, we'll, we'll get the lid off this. What I want to do is just get the lid off, measure the battery. Uh, I can show you that IDE thing because I honestly can't remember if it's compact flash or what. And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself to a degree because some of this stuff's going to be on the regular videos on my channel. I've got some Archimedes ones to go up soon. And uh, I've got the, the A4000 ones for Stephen as well, you know, the, the terrible fire uh, boards. Those will be probably two parts, you know, just the stuff that I did when I, they first arrived. Because you might find it interesting, even if you've watched the streams and seen me finish some of these boards off, you know, those ones for Stephen. Um, still interesting to watch because uh, there were an awful lot of issues I had actually trying to get those boards up and running. There's also a fourth part to the Archimedes stuff as well, it's a very short one just to follow up there. Can't get that screw out now, there we go. So it's just the three screws that hold these on and then hinge it towards the back like that carefully and it should come away. So yeah, so I'm, the, the, the two of these I've still got, the first one was the cream one that I sold. I got one of these things for both of them, you know, one of these little 3D printed things. It's better than nothing, that's all. I mean, there's no, there's nothing, you know, you could fit uh, a compact flash adapter or something on here yourself. 
but so I just figured it was better having something there than a gaping hole. Uh, yeah, you can see one of the IDE modules here from uh, that Xavier provided actually. So it's got like a little mini IDE connector there, hasn't it? I think. Yeah, is it like 40? Might be 40 pin instead of 44. I'm honestly not sure how many that is. Let's just get that out and have a look actually at that module just carefully. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see it's like, a, is it a disc on module thing? Yeah, 512 meg, 44 pin, IDE memory, a passer makes those. So, yeah, it's squashed down a little bit there, it's not very straight. Um, but yeah, those are really nice. Um, like I say, he was kind enough to provide, uh, I think, four of those or five of them, I can't remember how, how many now. So, some of these systems have got, I think, four of these actually. Some of these systems have got these in. Uh, so, the battery, that's what I was going to do, wasn't it? Just measure that battery. Um, mm, I'm just trying to think. The problem is, if I measure the battery, it's then going to lose the settings, isn't it? Mind you, if I measure it quite quick, it won't do. So, I'll do that in a moment. Let's move the meter over. But I need to do this because it's going to be, like I said, up for sale soon. I want to see now whether the battery needs replacing. I also want to see, out of interest, what level the battery is at, because this is uh, this was done, uh, when was this one done? It was probably finished off in January-ish, maybe February, but the battery's been in here since maybe last October or November, so it's been in there quite a while, so it's, uh, it's in well useful for me to see. Let's just pull that out again, because it's going to get in the way while I'm measuring it. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, level the battery is at. Uh, so I'll just show you, we've got this uh, little battery bay here look oh, I can't measure it now this is the problem trying to do it on stream is near impossible let me just see if I can put the catch that there and see if I can measure it that way easier said than done there you go two points eight volts roughly isn't it let's just stick that back down and see if it's lost its settings or not yeah, 2.8 volts. So it's uh, yeah, it's, it's gone down a little bit, but it's been in there six months. That's the thing. More than six months, really. Probably eight months. Yeah, we didn't lose the settings by doing that. Because there's going to be a capacitor over that, so if you, you're quick enough measuring it, you shouldn't lose uh, any settings or anything there, you know. Just uh, check what's going on in the chat, if anything. Got any questions or anything? Uh, Zarkos, Jonathan Abbott did a great job. AD FFS executes original games, including their protections. Yes, it is. It's brilliant. Really, really good. Um, I mean, you've said that, including their protections, that's not correct copies. But it does also allow you to patch those games, to patch the protection out, just by adding a few um, things into like the scripts and things there for that particular game, you know. Um, I'm probably going to sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't really when it comes to the Archimedes stuff. But there is like you know a little run script type thing you can edit, and uh, you can disable the protection for most of those games actually just doing that. So it's it's nice the way he's done that. He's um, giving you flexibility so that you can disable the protection on games. So I guess when you repair the A3000, remember the Risk OS 3.1 fitted. An Archie doesn't boot if the CMOS chip is missing or dead. Ah, okay, didn't know that. Um, yeah, I think they're all all right, though. I think these are all all right. I mean, we don't know until we get through some of those other 3000s. Uh, Matt, I wish I uh, could have got to know the Archimedes better in school. There wasn't much reference, and they were only for writing documents, spreadsheets, etc. Yeah, the, it's like I say, some schools had them and used utilised them a lot, and others perhaps didn't even have them. The school I was at didn't have any Archimedes, but um, when I got into the trade, um, there were lots of them, you know, some of the schools I support, there was a school nearby called Arnold High School, um, and there was another one as well, uh, somewhere near Thornton, I can't quite remember the name of them, that, they also had loads of Archimedes. Um, they had, funnily enough, I think they had some of these 3010s actually, but they primarily had like 4000s, um, they may have had a, was there a 5000? I think there was a 5000, and um, the a, uh, four, uh, 400s, a bit like the one I had, you know, 440s and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but mostly, I think Arnold School had mostly 4,000s actually, the point where I started uh, supporting them with their 
their machines. Anyway, let's uh, just switch that off again, stick the ID module back in. I'm just thinking, because that ID module was not in, have we now lost the settings for that? I hope not. It's easy to set back up, but I just hate fiddling around with things like that. I'll point you back at the screen in a sec, anyway. I'm literally going to get the lid back on this one now and then uh, test the next one. I will do more thorough testing before they go out. The main thing really was just to see if, they both, see if both if these ones are booting and see if uh, the batteries are alright and they are. So anyway, that's that one done. It's booted okay. The hard disk's back. I'll show you. Yeah, you can see the hard disk is there. ID disk 4. So I didn't lose anything by doing those uh, few tests and things there. Let's get the lid back on. Let's just have a look at the next one and see how that one behaves. can't remember if this is the one that was the red screen one. I think it is. I think this is the red screen one because this has got a bit more yellowish sort of appearance here. Could be wrong. We'll find out when we look at the, the other one in a sec. So let's just disconnect all these things, flip it over. Carefully get the three screws back in. Yeah, it's not very exciting stuff, but it's such as what I've got to do, really. It's all I've got to share at the moment. What I might do later in the week is have a look at uh, that bread bin C64 actually from my friend Dr. Andrew. That might be uh, interesting, but then again it might not be, <laughs> because it might be like, plug it in and go, yeah, it works. I mean, I'll take the lid off anyway. I'll take the lid off before I do anything with it, actually. What I'm hoping with that, and I'm sure it's, you know, my, my dreams are not going to come true, but what I'm hoping is it's got one of those, uh, is it an R4AR revision or something like that? There's a really weird revision of the SID, isn't it? And it's something like that, R4AR or something similar. It's got a similar series of letters there. Someone, if you know about it, post down below. But that revision is the only SID I have not come across since uh, I got back into this stuff. Well, you know, the number of C64s I've had, I've never seen one with that version of SID, so I'm hoping at some point I might just come across one of those through my travels. They seem to be quite rare. They sound slightly different as well, from what I understand. Um, anyway, that's that one, so let me just unplug it and swap over to the other. Let's move this out of the way. Just realised it's not clipped on properly on the back. Oh. Yeah, it is now. Steve Ellis, A7000 was... I'm going to miss that then. Yeah, sorry, hang on a minute. My chat's just gone to top chat, so I'm live chat. Yeah, eight seven thousand was a cut down RPC, you know, the risk PC, with no rear arm slot, but still very fast and capable machines. Oh, that was Zarkos that said that too, Steve Ellis. This is what happens when I don't keep keep up with what's going on. Right, let me move that out of the way. So I think we'll have a look at this one next. Although this one, I am planning on just um, keeping for a little bit, whilst. I get the other 3000s up per room. The reason being is because it's good to have a working unit like this to compare to. Um, so what I'll do is I'll keep this one until I've got that, that other board uh, working. You know, the one you perhaps might have seen me looking at. So with this one now for video, we're going to need uh, that cable. Where's my cable gone? Try and see it. It's over here. This is not the easiest thing I could have picked as a topic to do today, to be fair, because I'm spending all my time messing around with building leads here. I would love to try and find one now, but no chance. Uh, I've moved to Spain. Oh, OK. Yeah, it's quite hard to find these things out of the UK, generally. Right, so I'll connect up RGB. Um, connect up the RGB analog. What's that? Connect up the mouse on. This is one thing that uh, I don't particularly enjoy about these, and that's the connecting the mouse up. It just feels like a, a bit of a, an unnecessary trauma. Trying to get this thing in here. 
because it's like you've got to work out which way it goes up as well, you know. So it's like, oh my goodness. I'm literally going to have to weigh it down here, aren't I? In order to see the thing. I still can't see it. Which way? Which way does the notch go? You've got two pins on the bottom which go on the top. Okay, so the line goes downwards. Oh, and then you've got to try and get the thing. There we go. I think, think, think that's it. And then try and turn it back over again. <sighs> right, I need a battery now for the scar. You may be wondering why I need a battery. Hang on a sec. Yeah, I've got to hope these PP3 batteries haven't gone flat. Yeah, the reason I need a battery is because you need a voltage to switch the TV into RGB mode. Um, there are no uh, voltages you can sort of easily take off the back of it. Uh, well, well, certainly not on the video port. I'm just going to measure this battery. Yeah, 8.14. What's that one? Nine. So that one will do. Let's go with that one. Right. I think we're done. Let's uh, switch it on. Okay. So yeah, that's coming up. That's good. So again, that one's got four meg, and I think this has got an ID pod again. Thanks, uh, you know, courtesy of Zarkos as have you. Hang on a minute. Left click's not working on the mouse now. What's going on here? Or is it? Wait a minute, what is going on here? It's not the right, the right click does not do the same as the left click. It might just be the mouse connector. Let me just try and move the mouse connector. No, that's weird. The mouse again, put the mouse back in. Try that. Yeah, I think I've got a fault on this one. I think the left mouse button has stopped working. Actually, uh, I don't think it's the mouse, I think it's the actual connection on the board, perhaps. Let me rule out the mouse by trying another mouse here. Looking at the uh, pins on the mouse, it looks okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see. Um, yeah, they look alright. Let's try another mouse. So. The little line goes facing inwards. I think let's try that. Let's see what that one does. So it's moving around. Yeah, left click's not working. <laughs> oh, this is precisely one reason why I don't like to ship them straight out. I prefer to leave them hanging around for a bit and test them over a period of time. Because we, we right click works, look, but left click doesn't. Uh, could turn that one to bits and we could try and fix it, I guess. It's so fiddly to get to bits and stuff, that's the blooming problem. Right click opens the directory and closes the window. Yeah, but you should be able to use... It's almost a try rebooting, I don't think that's going to be it. We'll try rebooting anyway. Um, I think the left click is not working. You should be able to left click, I usually left click all the time. But on this one, it seems left click's not working just now. I can try and get some contact cleaner into the uh, socket there, because it could just be that. Yeah, left click is not working. Right click is though. If I right click that, it's opening. Yeah, okay, let me just get some contact cleaner. Let's, let's try the obvious things, easy, easy fixes first, before I commit to stripping it right down and stuff. Right. There 
There we go, sprayed a bit of contact cleaner in there. What I probably will do though is strip it down later and give it a bit more of a clean if that's uh, what it needs. I suspect though something has actually uh, gone, you know, i.e. we've got um, a corroded connection on the board or something like that. It's probably more likely than it just being a bit dirty. Let's see what it does this time. Gently in order to not bend pin pins. Uh, Yeah, it's not working. Oh, it's so annoying. Yeah, go on, let's take it to bits then. Let's work out what's wrong with it, because it's just gonna it's just gonna annoy me. It's gonna annoy me. So let's disconnect that. Um so I'll try and remember you getting these now. Leave my flat blade down. I really not be able to use it without well. let's just disconnect the mouse. Get the mouse first. So there you see, you can just literally push these in, look, there we go. And then the one over this side. And then the back should lift up a bit, like that. The thing I'm not still not clued up on. Oh, on a yeah, sorry, it was bound to happen at some point, wasn't it? I don't know what you're pointing at now, you're pointing at me. Yeah, the thing I'm still not clued up on with these is these front bits here. Is there any definitive way of doing this? Because I'm not sure. I've found that you literally just help just lift them over a little bit. You don't have to bend them, you just literally help prise them over a little bit. Like, I don't know, you can see that middle one there, you're a bit, uh, <laughs> you're a bit high up. Yeah, just like that a little bit, and that's it, and then they come out. I'm not sure if Acorn would have had, uh, I'm scratching that there. I don't, I'm not sure if Acorn would have had a tool to do that themselves in the factory. Well, not really in the factory, but in the workshops. So let's just move that lid out of the way. Disconnect the keyboard. Oh, I hate to get these things off as well. So awkward to get to. Just keep it out of the way. Yeah, this is the one that somebody else had had a go at fixing. I think it was Xavier. So typically, it's going to be one of the, 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 the from memory, the mouse signals go through some of these here, I think. So maybe we just got a bad connection somewhere related to one of those on the other side. Let me uh, let me try it without the. Uh, I'm trying to get this to balance. It won't blooming balance now. Yeah, let me try it without the lid on. Let's just get the mouse in there. Can okay, see what I'm doing? Oh my goodness! How hard is that to get in? That's it. Yeah, it doesn't feel great that actually. It doesn't feel great. Anyway, let's uh, let's get the video. Because uh, what we can do here now is now I've got it working like that. I can just wobble it around a bit and just see if that makes any difference while I'm actually using it. I don't know why I'm switching the Amiga power supply. On let's try that. So it's booting again. We've got no keyboard, but we don't need a uh, keyboard. Terrible fire highlight, like that power supply. Uh, mine is a bit of cardboard. Ah, right, okay, you've got cardboard over there. Yeah, this one's uh, different. I've been in this actually and taped this down, cleaned it all up with loads of corrosion up here. You'll see that in the next video. Um, anyway, the left button is still not working. Let me just try moving this while I click the left button. Hmm, it's not that. Is it going to be one of these? No. Let me get the logic probe. Let's see if I can... I'm not sure we're going to be able to trace it. What I did last time I did one of these is I disconnected a mouse. 
and I, uh, you know, not disconnected, disassembled the mouse and used con connectivity from the button to the actual board to work out exactly where it was going. Um, thinking about Logic Pro is not going to help me at all, really. Because we know we're not going to see a signal. I just don't know where it goes from here. So I think I would probably have to do the same thing. Disassemble the mouse. It's pretty tight, to be fair. I can't even get the blooming thing out now. And the pins are definitely not bent. So... Hmm. Right, should we take the mouse apart? Should we try and follow it through the mouse? I don't know. This is one reason why I wanted a working board though, because if this was the working board, I could now compare on the working board and see where the button goes without too much uh, effort. Uh, the problem is, this is not working, is it? Switch it off. Let's uh, unscrew this mouse. Funny thing is, this isn't what the video is intended to be. This was supposed to be just a test, check the battery, etc. But clearly something else has gone wrong with this over a period of time. I think this is one you've not seen yet. This will be the next Archimedes video that goes up this one. So I'm not going to talk too much about this one, because you'll see it in a video on its own. So, yeah, that's not looking very clean, is it? Maybe I've not been inside that mouse anyway. So the left button here. Let me just test on the meter, put it on continuity. Just gonna work out which one's the common one. because uh, each of it's gonna be that one, isn't it, I think? Yeah, which means that one is the switched one, the right-hand side of it. Just looking at the solder points there, they don't look so clever, do they, on that switch? Um, can you see that? That one there doesn't look... Well, that's all right. It's just a shadow. Anyway, can you see, this is our switch here. And on one side of it, it goes along here and it's joined to that switch. And then that side's joined to that switch. So you've got the three different buttons. They've all got a common contact. That's going to be the ground or something. So the, the switch one we're looking for is this one here. So if I just trace that, it goes up to pull up or pull down. But it's going to go straight to the cable here ultimately. So if we just work out where on the cable it goes. Um, I think it goes to the cable. Maybe it Huh? This is weird. I'm just going to test that switch as well, but I've just changed the mouse, so it can't be the... Yeah, the switch works. So it's not that. What I don't understand is how, when I measure from here... Yeah, let me pull you down a little bit, if I can move you over here, perhaps. Yeah, when I measure from uh, there, we aren't getting a join over here. I thought the buttons went direct. Maybe they don't, maybe they go through uh, an IC on the... But the right button and the middle button work. That's the weird thing. Let's try the middle one. Just look at the middle button, uh, that side of the middle button. Where's it come? It comes down here, goes to one of these, doesn't it? Yeah, it goes there. So let's check from there to there. I think maybe I need to go through the resistor. Yeah, so like that one. Yeah, that one's the middle one. So the right one, let's see which resistor that goes to. Sorry if I'm blocking it here. I'm doing my best to try and show you without blocking it, but it's, uh, it's not easy. So this is the other one. Hang on. What is going on with that? 
That's not sure. That's not sure. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm looking at the common one again. Sorry. I'm being stupid. How does that right button go? Nowhere. Maybe it is the two mice. Maybe it's the mice. Maybe the right, right button's the issue. Because it comes up here, goes down there, and it goes somewhere over here. Well, that's uh, it's a bit of a mystery. Let's just move that mouse out of the way. Let's get it to the other mouse. It would be funny if I just dismantled this uh, A3000 to find that it's actually the mouse that's the issue. Uh, let's disconnect it. Now, my, my mate Vince Watch uh, had a new battery yesterday as well. I nearly ran to ring Vince actually to ask him how to disassemble the thing to get the battery, change the battery. Because I got into it and there's like a massive metal shield over the whole thing, including the battery. And uh, I was like, how on earth do you change the battery? This should be so easy, and it's not. You've got to take the whole thing to bits, take the watch out of the, you know, the thing there. You know, the, you have to take the whole thing out of the thing and uh, unclip about five clips to get the whole of the metal piece off the back of it just to change the battery. It was crazy. Luckily, I just happened to have one of the right batteries. So it's booting up again. I'll show you. I'll point at the screen. I'm sure you get sick of looking down there. So we've got that other mouse plugged in this time, uh, I think. Which one is it? I think it's that one. Right, let's try this one. No. Oh, I can't move the bloody thing around. No, that's still not working. Yeah, so I'm not imagining things. Let's go back to the mouse again, see if we can work out what is going on. Oh, I hate problems like this. It's going through an R to the cable resistor. Yeah, I think it is, but I'm not finding that resistor for that switch, actually. That's the problem. We did on the other ones, but not on this one. So I'll just make sure it's switched off before I start sticking things on this board. are all wrapped around each other. Right, I'll put it back down here again if I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah this tripod fights me every step of the way. So let's just make sure we've got a yeah, it got a short there up in itself. So it comes across here and it goes up here and it looks like it's going to these resistors. Oh, that is now. Yeah, there we go. So it's going to that resistor. So that top resistor is the one we need to focus on. Then it's going to go to the one of the pins here and somewhere. <laughs> what? Let me just check that resistor. 4.7k. Let me just check that middle one again. So the middle one, the middle one came to that one, didn't it? Yeah. And then the pin on the other side. Yeah, it goes down there, I think. So why is this one? I don't know, I think that's a pull-up or something. Because I'm just looking at the rail it goes to there and it comes up all the way around here and goes all the way around the board. Does it go to this chip down here somewhere? 
Maybe it does. Let's just measure that. Yeah, it goes there. So why does... Does that one do that? Oh, they both do that. It's a pull-up. Yeah, it's a, it's a... One side of those wrists are all short together. Hmm. So I think the buttons go to the switch down here. I didn't think it was wired that way. Because I thought, when, hang on a minute, when I, when I did a, a mouse adapter for one of these, it followed the Amiga standard, didn't it? You just had the third button. So, you know, well, I said the Amiga standard, you, had, you could wire Amiga mouse to the same thing. You know, you didn't need any magical chip to do anything with the buttons or anything like that. You know, it's not like they were serialised or anything like that. So, the buttons should, in theory, go straight to this, actually. I think. Yeah, straight to the cable. They've got to. Maybe we had a bad connection, because can you see that? Now I'm getting a short look on, on that top pin. Hmm. Right, so if it goes to the top pin, anyway. So the top pin is the one we want. Let's have a look at the thing in there where it's gone. Thing here. Yeah, I'm not making much sense today, I'm having a bad day. So the, the top pin, I just need to try and hold that on there. Let's see if I can shove it into that. Yeah, I can just kind of sit it like that. And then we can probe here. Hopefully that's joined. It's just my look that and it's like the last pin. The last pin I check it's that one. Yeah, so the two on their own down here, it's the right hand one of those two. So I think we'll need to pull this out next, actually. Um, got the other board over there, haven't we? Can have a look at that. Let me just go and get that other board. Hang on. Trying to catch if I can find the bunny thing. Yes, the crazy thing here is I'm using a faulty board to help us diagnose the working board. Well, the kind of working board that has a fault. Because we've got the connector we took off it already, so this is going to make this a bit easier. Actually, I might not need to take the board out. So if we uh, plug this uh, into here, I think, is that the right way up? No, it's not. That's the right way up. Yeah, plug that into there. Test again, so it's going to be one of the, oh, I was going to say two on their own, but there aren't. By the time it comes into here, you see, it's not like that, is it? We've got two rows of them. Yeah, it's that one. So, when it's on the board, it's the second one down here. Uh, it's that one there, I think. Yeah. So, when it's on the board, it's going to be that one. Let me just... Get my meter again. What I want to look at here is where that goes, actually. Can okay. put that over. Yeah, so it's the second one down here. And that's going to go to one of these things here, I think. Or is it? I honestly can't see, there's that much flux and stuff around there. No, that one goes to one of these. And the third one goes to one of these. Ah, the second one goes there. So we've got one uh, connection there on its own. So let me just flip that over and see what that is. I'll tell you what, things are getting complicated here, aren't they? I've got so much, so much stuff around here. Um, stick the probe through, and as I turn it over, I can see where it is. I think. Yeah, I can. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, it's this this link here. Where well, you got this link here? This is where it comes out. So, 
yeah, anyway, I'm just going a long way around trying to show you some of this stuff. But you can do things like that in order to avoid having to take it to bits, but also to another, help you work out where the issue is. So it's, it's this one here. It's this one here. So if we plug that back into the port, let's just see if it's coming up there. So, oh, hang on, the camera's trying to make me go for it again. Let me just lift that so I don't trip the camera. Get it back in again. That's it. Hang on, is that the right mouse now? Or is that the wrong mouse? No, that's the right mouse. Someone said pins five, six, nine, and ground are for buttons. Thank you. Wish I'd read that a few minutes ago. <laughs> right, so let's just test again from the oh, the first wire there, which is that one. I'll just see if it's coming out here. And it isn't. So that's the issue, isn't it? That is the issue. Because we're plugged into here, so we should have connectivity down the wire through the connector. And it, if it was wired up, this was wired up to this thing here. This is where it would be coming out. So, all right, let's take the board out. Let's just go and fix that because it's going to take a minute to do it, isn't it? I mean, that was an awful lot of messing around there just to show you the what I was trying to get across, really. Ways of testing things like that. So let's pull that out. I should have the ESD wrist strap on again here. Just connect the mouse, unscrew the floppy drive, I think there's four screws, yeah there are. This is the point where the drive falls out the back. Oh, it's still not out, is it? Back, oh, there we go. One screw still holding it there. There we go. One, two, three, four. Well, I'm counting four. I only see three screws there now, so where's the fourth one gone? Oh, I don't know. We'll find that in a minute anyway. Let's just get the drive out. I mean, it's still there. That's why I can't find the fourth one. There we go. Four. So, let's pull the drive out. Disconnect it from there. Disconnect its power. Move it out of the way. We can leave that there, can't we? Uh, speakers. It's easy just to pull these speakers out. Well, that one there, the left one, you can just leave. Just disconnect it, though. Just connect the power here. And then there's like two or three screws. So, let's see if we can show you these. got a screw here. Yeah, screw down there. There's a little one in that corner there, a little wee one. And it is wee, actually. I'm not just saying it's wee, it's tiny. Look, it's weird how you get... Uh, a tiny, tiny one in this corner here. It's like they felt it didn't need much support, so let's give it a really small one. Um, and then there's usually one here as well. Yeah, I can see it there. One there. Three screws hold the board in on these. I haven't seen any more screws in any of the other ones. I think it's just those three. And then I think, have I missed anything here? The ground on here, look. A bit of wrestling. Yeah, a bit of wrestling here, and you can sort of get it out, look. Uh, move it out of the way. You can see the speaker thing there. Can you see that's hanging off? And then pull that off, look. Plastic housing. Sometimes if you pull them, the housings will slide up a bit. Anyway, so we know exactly what we need to do, I think. I mean, look at this. This isn't why I've done this. And it's a good job. Whoever did it has done a good job. They've put lots of repair wires on there. I think this is what the other board, you know, that one I've been looking at. Let's see if I can show you this one is going to end up like. It's going to have as many wires as that, if not more. I think maybe it was Xavier did this. He's done a good job. Um, so, 
it was the one pad on its own, wasn't it? It was like this one here. Let me see if I can show you. Put the point of the screwdriver on it. It was that one. That point there. So we're just going to need a wire, I think, from there to the point over here. Um, so I'll wheel back over to the mat. Just give me a sec. Let me just take this board over and I'll bring you over. We'll just uh, we'll test it on continuity and see if we can solve the wire. We need to go back over there anyway, to be honest, because the battery is not going to hold out on the camcorder. Well, the camera phone. So let's, uh, let's go back over there. I've got the uh, Mac with me. I've got the multimeter. I've just switched the solder iron on. I'm just going to plug you back into charge, give you some electricity there we go yeah we're down to 44 percent trying to see if i've missed anything here comment wise and questions and things it's impossible for me to keep up just now I was hoping it wasn't going to be one of these kind of streams actually, it was, I was hoping to look at that, I was hoping to get some chips onto this sim here, fix that, have another look at some of the other Amiga bits and pieces over there, but um, yeah things never got according to plan, this has turned into an annoying repair, I thought this, this machine was fine. The funny thing is actually on the other A3000 the exact same thing happened, I kid you not, it was the exact same thing, before I came to ship that other one. I uh, tested and tested and tested, it was fine, everything was fine, and then the day before I came to ship it, I was like, right, this is the final test, tested the mouse, left mouse button doesn't work. And I think it was actually the same exact, it might have been the right button, it was one of the buttons wasn't working, it was exactly the same thing, you'll see that when I come to upload the series on that, part two or part three. Uh, three. Um, just looking at the solder points there, they don't even look soldered, actually. I don't know if you can see that, let me just try and get you closer. None of the solder points have come away there. One or two of those look really crusty. Anyway, I'll inspect with magnification, just give me a sec. Maybe the solder's come away or something. Yeah, the solder's not great on those. Let me just test on continuity before we solder it. I'm wondering if it just needs a bit of solder on it. And a bit of flux. Let's test that one. That one goes there. That one goes there. The one that's not working should go. Oh, it's going there now. I don't know. I think we'll just get a little bit of flux on that and solder that, and then just measure from the other side to see if it's uh, see if it's any better. Actually, I don't even think we need a fixed wire on. Let me just temporarily just move this wire up a little bit out of the way. I need another tube of flux, I think. Squeeze the last little bit out of this. That reminds me, actually, that's a question to you guys. I can show you some. <clears throat> Have you ever tried to like, reclaim flux from empty tubes like that? <laughs> because obviously there's quite a lot of flux in there. Many of those tubes have got, I would say, as much as 10% of the flux still in there. What I was thinking of doing is uh, using some IPA, you know, dissolving it all into IPA, because flux often is made with IPA as well. But then in theory, if some of the IPA evaporates off, it should, if I can clean all those tubes out and get all of the contents out into the IPA, dissolved into it, eventually it should just be left with some flux. What are your thoughts on that? Would you think I'm crazy? <laughs> it's just the thing is, some of this, when I bought it originally, it was quite expensive. It was like four or five pound a tube back when I couldn't find anywhere else to buy it. So, you know, you look at count how many of the tubes there are in there. There's an awful lot of cost <laughs> associated with the flux uh, that I've used. And that's the amount of flux I've used, I think, over the last five years. I've just been kept, you know, storing them away there in a, uh, a bag. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get a bit of solder on this and let's just reflow those. 
I'll be flow the resistor thing as well, you know, the zero arm link. See if that uh, makes any difference. Let's see if I can zoom you a little bit, see if you can see what I can see about how bad that is. Let me see if I can get you back a bit here. Where, where are we now? Yeah, now I've got flux on it, you can't really tell. But trust me, the solder points there are not very good. Not very good at all. Let's see if I can come in this way. What is going on here? It's not even doing anything. Ah, oh, there we go. It's starting to melt. I should be using that uh, extractor, shouldn't I? Let me just do it on. Yeah, I got a uh, fume extractor provided by ZX Kim, didn't I? I showed that a few videos back two streams ago. Switch it on. Yeah, let me see, see if I can show you it. Yeah, here we go. So. Let's use that, let me just move it out of the way, put it up here. Because I don't think you need to be viewing that close anyway. I'm not sure if it's worth me taking that socket off, actually. I mean, it has been off there at some point in the past. Yeah, my fume extractor is working really well. I can't smell anything. I've ordered some uh, good quality filter stuff for it as well, you know, to stick in the back uh, part of it so that it's, uh, you know, properly filtered. Should a bit more to that. Try and get that corner point there. It's got a weird shape. That's it. So, we'll do the front row as well. I know you can't really see what I'm doing there, but I'm literally just, all I'm doing is heating them up, waiting for the flux and the solder to try and reflow it, really. Yeah, those ones are flowing a bit better. Front ones. Bridge two there, look. Let me just uh, use the solder sucker here. So I've got the solder sucker here. Stephen Lee was copied me and got exactly the same one. He's a copycat. <laughs> it's a good one. Um, Andrew Littleboy provided this, so you can't see what I'm doing blocking it. There we go. All that solder's just gone instantly on both pins there. Yeah, I'm much happier with those now. Though. Flowing really well. <sighs> a bit too well, actually. That one's got a giant blob on it. Let's just do that last one. That's all right. Let's just remove a bit of solder from that one because that one's a giant. Yeah, that's not so bad, right. I'm just going to just toothbrush that and then we'll measure a few things. Thankfully, I've still got a reasonable amount of IPA at the moment. I've got about, I don't know, a litre in this bottle. 
and uh, I've probably got a couple of litres spare still. Because IPA with uh, you know the whole virus thing has become a, a rare commodity. It's like really shot up in price. I think on Steve, someone on Stephen's stream was saying it's like uh, was it fifty pounds for five litres or something, which is crazy. Something like that. So I'm going over the cotton bud initially. We'll reflow that uh, one point down here as well on the what's his name zero on link. Get some kitchen roll. Even kitchen rolls <laughs> becoming a rare commodity, it was. I had to buy a load of it a few weeks ago in the, as a job lot because it was proving impossible to find in the supermarkets. It seems like when it comes to Armageddon, all people care about is toilet roll and kitchen roll. Those are the two main things in trading commodities. You know, you can imagine if society broke down, those would be the uh, new currency. How much for that Amiga 4000? Oh, that'll cost you 500 bog rolls, please. <sighs> yeah, there we go, so... It's looking a bit, uh, let's have a look at it, a bit bitty. But we've not got any shorts there. Um, let me just, that thing. Has it gone there? It was this one, wasn't it? Let me just suck that solder away. Let's crush on it. I'm going to reflow those two, three rather, as well. Yeah, I'm just going to remove the solder off those two now actually because it just needs replacing, I think. Maybe that hasn't been done. I hope I haven't disturbed any of these wires here doing that. Anyway, let's just flip it over and let's uh, do a connectivity test. Got some IPA leaks on the side here. Switch that fan off now. Stephen said, come down a bit, 47 for 5 litres now. Ooh, not come down much though, has it? I think the last lot I bought was something like £15 for 5 litres or something, was it? Something like that, or £18 for 5 litres, I honestly can't remember. It's more than doubled though, for, for sure, it's trebled. So it was like one of these ones down here, wasn't it? I forget which one now, we'll test them both. Not that one. Not sure if I can get the probe in there properly. I'm not even sure I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't think that probe's fine enough to go in there, actually. Test it from the other side. Uh, that one, wasn't it? What is going on here? Uh, was it one of the in ones? No, it wasn't. It was one of the outer ones. So maybe it is faulty. Yeah, I'm getting resistance there. Huh. 
Hang on a minute. So test that one. That one goes. Yeah, that one goes there. That one goes there. Yeah, I think it's all right. I think we should just test it now. I think we should just test it now. I think it's okay now. Um, I think that's all it was. I think it was a bad solder point on the mouse port. Because I don't think I reflowed that. I just left it as it was. Um, because somebody else had done some repair work to it previously. And I thought it looked okay. But, you know, after you stick a mouse in and out a number of times like that, that's the sort of thing that can happen where you do get a bad connection if it's not being reflowed. So uh, I'll unplug you, I'll just take you back over there. And we'll connect this up again. It's like an assault course in here at the moment, I tell you. I feel like I'm playing, uh, what's that game called? Um, combat school. Yeah, the assault course. Oh, yeah, that's what it feels like in here. The only thing we haven't got is monkey bars, but if I continue to fill the floor up, I well need monkey bars in here for me to be able to negate my way around the room. I don't like putting these back in, it's painful. Can you see here, look, there's a clip missing. It's already lost a clip there in the past, but you kind of got to get these in at a weird angle. You kind of slide it in down here, get that post like that there, and then you kind of wrestle with it for a bit. This, this middle bit here, can you see? There. You've got to get that one over there, look, and then it goes in. When it goes in, it goes in really easy. Ah, but, but then you'll find this over here, where you're not under the thing there, so you've got to... Again, wrestle with it a little bit, lift it back out a bit, bring the front down a little bit, like that, and tuck it back in. There we go. So I won't put the screws back in, we'll just, uh, what do we need now? We need to get the UI up, don't we? Um, so anyway, let's connect power and ground. Over here. Up. Ground. Red, it's 5 volts. We'll connect one of the speakers up, just so we get some sound, get some video. Up. We don't need the floppy drive, I don't think. Let's connect our mouse up again. So this little arrow goes upwards towards us, I think. Oh, there we go. Plug it in. So that's the mouse, uh, I think. I think we can switch it on. Not see anything crazy. Let's switch it on. Yeah, so it's booting up again. Put it on the screen. Let's see what happens with the mouse now. So we'll try. Left click. Yes, left click's working. Fantastic. Can you see the little two arrows? Yeah. So uh, if I will try and reassemble the mouse now, hang on a minute. If I put the ball in it, um, put it in its base, I should be able to wheel it around, I think. Yeah, I can wheel it around, look. And if I try and click on apps, hang on, I can't press the button. Yeah, there we go. It's working. Left button fixed. Oh, that was painful, wasn't it? All of that, just for a single solder point. So we'll get the mouse back together, switch this off. Anyway, if anything, this highlights the importance of testing things, especially when you're repairing these Archimedes. You know, you get a lot of corrosion on them. Don't ever be tempted to just quickly bodge, you know, throw them together, you know, and uh, send them out uh, without having tested them for a period of time, because the corrosion will just bite you. It will just come back and bite you. You think you've dealt with it all, and you haven't. And it's going to be frustrating as an end user as well. I'd hate to sell one of these and then find two weeks down the line, the like concepts me like, oh, my mouse has stopped working. You know, it's, this is the thing. This is why my approach is to not be in a rush to sell the blooming things. You know, fix them and leave them sat around for two or three months and then just use them every now and again. 
use them for periods, you know, long periods of time, and then don't use them for a month or two, and then decide whether you want to sell them or not. That's, that's the way I do things. Because this one would have bitten me. If I'd have just stuck this on eBay now and sold it, it would have bitten me. There we go. So that's that back together. So let's get the speaker back in here. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, yeah, we need to do that. Get the speaker back in there like that. That's one thing I like about these is the stereo speakers. You know, if you look at the 3010, I think it's only got one speaker, hasn't it? Has it? I can't remember now. I think it has. Whereas the 3000 has got two. So you get proper stereo. Just trying to work out what I need now. So I need my drive. Here's one I made earlier. So let's uh, stick with that there. We'll connect it up in a minute. Let's get one of the screws in just to hold it. Again, this is one of those painful moments that trying to get one of these back in here. Well, it's not so bad when you're not doing a stream. So, like, I need my knee. I need my knee to. Hang on. I need more hands as well. I need an extra pair of hands. Someone can lend me a hand. Let's screw through there. Yeah, sorry, I'll move the camera in a sec. Yeah, appreciate it's wobbling a bit while I jiggle around here. There we go. Sorry. That first screw is the difficult one because uh, the drive will just fall out without at least a single screw hole together there. But once you've got one in, the other ones tend to go in a bit easier. See how that one's gone straight in, I think. Yeah. There we go, it's held on one side. Uh, I should really get the motherboard screw back in that corner before I forget as well. You're not going to be able to see it, but trust me. On. It's going in. Here we are. Let's get the other two motherboard ones in before I forget. One down here. This is the same board Stephen fitted into his, his uh, Archimedes 3000 in his stream last night. It's one of those IFL boards. Just with a 4 meg 72 pin sin. From what I understand, Stephen had a terrible fire with his uh, sin in his. Um, just towards the end of that stream there, I saw he was removing one of the ceramic uh, caps there. That, you know, a bypass cap that seemed to have gone bye-bye. Uh, for whatever reason, it could have had a mark on it or a scratch or whatever. Because if it's an MLCC or something like that, you know, those things, um, they don't need much in the way of, uh, you know, to cause it to fail. Just like an impact at some point in its past or uh, something like that. It can have a little fracture and those fractures go short. Before you know it, something goes bye-bye. Uh, be interesting to see if that sim still works from there. I'm assuming it will. I'm sure if he just gets a new cap on it it will be operational again. There we go, that's the drive back in, I think. Yeah, secure. So we've got speakers, just need the power and the data. Floppy drive, and data. Power, ground over here. Just make sure those are firmly on. So I think that is it. We just need the keyboard now, don't we? I might as well stick the ID module back in there while we're here as well. That's that. So I'll do the one facing nearest to me first, the front one. There we go, went in nice and easy. And then we'll do this one, which is never easy, the second one. That's it. Put that back into position there. Video. Power on again and see what's happening. And get the video on. Well, at least it's booted. Mouse isn't plugged in. Just give me a sec to plug the mouse back in again.
Oh, it's tires like this. I wish I'd not stuck the keyboard back on there because now I can't see what I'm doing with the mouse again. Oh my goodness. Whose idea was it at Acorn to put the mouse underneath it? I swear. It must have been related to the people that decided to stick the mouse on the Atari ST under the front. It must be like brother and sister or something. Yay, left click is working. Well, that was a trauma, wasn't it? Just to get the left click working on the mouse. So, uh, I'll put you back down here again. Let's get the lid back on it. Can't wait to sell this one now. I'm seriously glad to see the back of this one. Not really, I'll miss it. So, uh, yeah, click the front on. And then kind of switch it off. On. Yeah, I'll show you what I'm doing here. You've got to try and sort of get the edge of the frame over the top of that plate there. Can you see that? That side's going in. And then, again, trying to do this one-handed look, walking along here with my fingers. <laughs> uh, and try and do the same here. Can you see here? There's where they snag. You lift it a little bit, and it should clip in. And then again, it should clip in. That's it. All back together. It's in pretty good condition, that one, actually. It's in pretty good condition. There's barely a mark on it, just that we've got a little scratch but I think uh, yeah I think that one's come out really well so let's boot it again let's try a game on it <sighs> I don't know that I'm testing look we'll now find there's some sort of other fault like a RAM fault or something we'll of course test the floppy drives on these later as well in fact go on let's 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 test fate let's stick a floppy in it So they're 800k drives these, you know, high density, not uh, not high density, double density, not high density. Yay, it's reading discs. Lemon, lemmings demo, let's try that. And then we'll try something from the hard disk. This demo actually came off one of the Archimedes from uh, Noel, I think it was Noel High School, actually. <laughs> it's one of the ones that came in for service and had this demo on there. So I was like, I'll have a copy of that. Sweet. Right, switch it off. Which boot something from hard disk. Uh, I'll spring the Mac over to catch up with chat. I'm going to get off in a minute because I didn't expect to be going on this long. I thought we'd be uh, done by now. In fact, I thought we'd have done that sin by now as well. I'll just quickly show you what Anthony sent from Right Retro Gaming as well. We'll have a look at that in another stream. So if you've got any uh, questions or anything before I get off, please. Remind me now in case I've missed it, because I've pretty much missed all the chat for the last hour, I think. Uh, Mike and Cook's got to go now, no worries, thanks for popping by, uh, Table Flame. Was uh, a sim that's been in a box for 10 years? Ah, okay, so Stephen was talking about that sim that burst into flames, it was a one that'd been in the box for 10 years. Maybe it had a knock or something at some point in the past, that's probably what's happened to that capacitor on it, I would think. Um, could be a manufacturing defect or something that's just been there for all that time. Mouse location is idiotic, yeah, I do agree. There's lots I like about the Archimedes, there's just a few things I don't. Um, you know, there's aspects of the user interface that I absolutely adore, and then there's things that just drive me to despair. Uh, like renaming a file, for example, doesn't matter, it, but, you know, the, uh, there are lots I like about the user interface. I actually prefer myself personally to, to Workbench, if I'm honest, some of the stuff, but then there's things in Workbench I like, quite like over this. Um, so nothing's ever perfect. Um, the mouse position certainly isn't, <laughs> to say the least. You get an extension, can't you, probably? I'm surprised no one's mentioned that, or maybe they have. Uh, you know, like you get on the Atari ST, you know, you plug an extender in, and then you, you do your plugging and unplugging your mouse outside of the system, you know, sort of underneath it. Um, I, I've got one of those constantly connected to my Atari ST, I leave it there all the time. 
safe and you haven't some you know lift the thing up and fiddle around underneath. Uh, Chris Morley, hi Chris, hi uh, uh, Chris Morley. Where to download Lambda? I see someone's obsessed with <laughs> downloading Lambda. Someone keeps asking that one of my streams. Where's the Lambda with sound? Why is there no version of Lambda with sound? The I don't I don't know about the Lambda demo. I don't know if it ever had sound, but that game is um, what's it called? What's that game called? I forget the name of it now. Uh, Z Zark, isn't it? Zark. You can get Zark. Just you need to search for it on the internet. It's super hard to find. I can't even remember where I found it now. But there is a website somewhere that's got lots of disc images for the Archimedes and you can download it and it's got sound. Um, if I can remember where it is, I'll point you towards it. Yeah, someone else has said there's Zark. Yeah, there you go. That's what it's called, Zark. I'm not sure if that's on here. It probably isn't because I think this has just got the JASP, the stuff that John Abbott has got permission to distribute. The Zark isn't one of them. I think David, uh, whatever he's called, Braeburn is it? David, uh, is that his name? David, yeah. The guy who created Elite, uh, he didn't want it to be distributed at this point in time, I don't think. He's not given the go-ahead for it. Let's go into the discs folder. Yeah, it's not mounted. Should mount it now. What's your load, guys? What do you pick? Tossack collection is full of rubbish and viruses, beware. Which Tossack collection? I've got loads of Tossack collections and never any viruses. You're talking about the Archimedes stuff or the Amiga stuff. Uh, I'm not familiar with how many viruses there actually may have been on the Archimedes, if any. I know there were quite a lot on the ST and quite a lot on the Amiga. You used to get those boot sector protectors, didn't you? It's like a little load of it. Occupied the boot sector and popped up a message, you know, and if that didn't pop up, you knew you'd got a virus. Something had overwritten it. I think Sensible Soccer's on here, isn't it? I'm just not sure if it's one of these two disc games. I think it is. Let's load Speedball. Oh, can we run the mouse? I'm trying to use a book. There's my mouse pad here, and it's, it's not, not working well. Oh, I can't. There we go, I've clicked it. I can't say I can't click it. I can't move the mouse, it's awful. Anyway, so it's not been a very interesting stream today and I've not been able to get the right words out and things. I've just been kept getting stuck with my words. I've just had one of those days where I don't feel that great and everything's gone uh, wrong, putting it bluntly. I expected that look at this 3000 here to take approximately two minutes and that isn't what's happened, is it? Anyway, as you can see, that's working and uh, both speakers are working. You can hear different sounds coming from one side to the other. Anyway, let's switch it off. So thanks a lot guys, I'm going to get off now. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, stay safe.